Welcome to the Coach's Preview Show. I'm your host, Darren Joins, Williamson County Schools Athletic Director. Our special guest here today, Mr. Brian Coleman, head football coach at Summit High School, and Donnie Webb, head coach at Franklin High School, talking about tonight's WCTV Game of the Week, Franklin at Summit. Gentlemen, appreciate you guys taking time out of your busy schedule to be here today. Thanks for having me. Thank you, sir. So tonight's game does allow both teams to step out of region play. I know with Summit, they, you guys have played a region game. You played it last week, and I guess you finished your season off again with your final four games. So you've got several uh, region games. Franklin, uh, obviously, has already played a region game as well, and we'll jump back into it pretty quickly here. But uh, this does still allow you guys uh, to face a good team and a great atmosphere, even though we're limited. Uh, let me start off by asking – I'll let Coach Coleman answer this first – the, the crowds, obviously, they're not as big, but when I've been to games, it's they still have a presence. Would you agree with that? Oh, yeah. I mean, it's not it's not quiet by any means. You know what I mean? I mean, I know there's less people, but, I mean, you still get the atmosphere. You still get the feel. You still get the, the crowd noise, the, the, the hooping and hollering. And, and I think the kids that are there and the fans are there are having a great time. Coach Webb, I was at your game last week. Uh, with Ravenwood, and I made the the comment to someone that in looking at the crowds you had and the enthusiasm like Coach Coleman was talking about, and this is the same for the other games I've been to as well, there's a lot of schools and a lot of school systems who would take the crowds we have right now during a normal year. Would you agree with that? Oh, without a doubt. It was a, it, it was a really good crowd, ex especially for the, you know, the spaced out atmosphere that we're having, having to provide. And the weather helped as well. You know, the first two weeks with all that rain, it was, uh, I'm sure without a doubt, that even more dampened the spirits, for lack of a better word. How about with the guidelines? I talked to Coach Coleman about this before his game with, uh, with Independence. They were our WCTV game of the week for week one. Uh, how's that been going, Coach Webb? Do you feel like it's gone pretty smoothly in terms of you guys have a nice rhythm now about – how you're handling uh, this 2020 <laughs> that we're in right now? Uh, yes, sir. We're, we're having to uh, teach and learn along the way as well. We, you know, we find spots, where, right, you know, I'll, I'll call it hiccups almost because you're dealing with, you know, we're still dealing with kids and, and we don't have the blessings of when, when people look at, for example, college let's use college sports almost like a utopia where they also got the baseline of help around them uh, with the heat coming back this past week. <laughs> we've noticed, you know, kids are with this kids being in school, bringing their own water has become a challenge, you know? And so we've had to learn different ways to Oh, now we got to, since we can only provide water fill up stations, uh, we got to remind them to bring their bottles because they're using them during the school day. So we learned that this week, because it wasn't as hot the last two weeks when we had them in school. And so it kind of a, was a little hiccup this week where I had to deal with. Coach Coleman, same thing. Yeah, I totally agree. I mean, we're just learning as we go along the way. Uh, how we locker room. I mean, we're splitting up half and half how it goes in the locker room. We have certain locker room one time and then kind of move one and out, one in type things. Uh, hydration was a big thing, I think, for the Independence game for us because – uh, I, didn't, I don't think we did a great job of taking into account of pregame hydration um, because we kind of just put it on the kids, and that wasn't really good for us. We Now we're getting, you know, coolers and coolers full of water bottles. You know what I mean? So that, that's helped out tremendously. Uh, and where we dress, I mean, pregame, we're going in the gym and just hanging out in there. I mean, it's the coolest spot of the whole school, uh, based out, things like that. And then we just go to the locker room and dress in groups. I mean, I mean, it's just getting to be the norm now. I mean, kids are responding well, and it's our new normal, I think. And John Wiles not out there saying, hey, make sure you don't have any cleats on on the floor now. We are around the edges, that's for sure. <laughs> We're not anywhere on his little paint, I, I promise you. That. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that floor looks good out there. Uh, it does. It really does. <laughs> this past summer, it look, looks great. Looks great. Let's talk a little football now. You know, what's interesting to me and in, in – in, working with you guys and watching what you do. Obviously, I was at Franklin High School there for three years with Coach Webb, so I watched his teams uh, obviously more than Summit, and now I'm getting a chance to watch everybody play. But you guys are so known 
running the ball. But then when I look at your teams this year, uh, and I know Coach Coleman, you had a little different situation, obviously, with Columbia. And we'll talk about that here in just a minute. Uh, but certainly your team last year and then Coach Webb with you guys this year, you're doing a lot of throwing the ball. Is that based on, and we'll start with Coach Webb, uh, what the opponent is showing you, they're making you throw the ball, or you just feel like that's where you have an advantage? Well, I mean, football, we can sit here and you can hand the pin to any man in the stands, whoever wants to be the last one holding the pin, he's going to win. The, the last man with the pin wins. And so everything's about numbers. And, and, and if their numbers are open, too, too many in the box, then, you, then you're going to throw the ball. All, almost all of us now, or some form of um, option football without calling it option. <laughs> um, yeah. uh, and when I watch Summit, for example, they're spread, but it's still the wing T uh, perspective of it on the inside. So they're blocking part, there's, there's options in there. Um, and so that's where, especially like, for example, the Riverdale game, if we go back to – weeks where you know Connor had a Connor Bevin and Connor Bevins had a nice start but that was a really good game for him um the numbers were were, were for our advantage to be on the outside and, and, and throw the football and so that's where it comes from and coach Cohen I'm, I've always been fascinated with the wing T I was at I think I've told you this before I was at Beach High School for several years with Roger Holmes and I just loved it to watch it I was doing the PA for him for a few years and just to watch that from above is kind of a thing of beauty. But talking about what Coach Webb said, even though uh, maybe you are throwing the ball a little bit more, still got that wing team T base in terms of how you set up, correct? Yes, sir. Uh, and twofold on that on that question too. And all that I think is personnel uh, for one thing. The reason why we're spreading out and throwing it uh, just because of the kids we have, you know, just just uh, utilizing their talents, I guess you could say. Um, and before uh, in the wing T, we kind of went to the wing T because we were undersized. And it still seems like we're kind of undersized. So you can have undersized linemen and that wing T, you know, creates the better angles, blocking angles, because it's going to be hard for any of our guys to one-on-one -on -one block, especially somebody of Franklin's uh, offensive defensive line, you know, straight up. So it creates the angles. You just got to get your head placement and stuff like that. Uh, and then, you know, running the pass in the football, like Coach Webb said, uh, Take what the defense gives you. I mean, where where are they? Are they loading the box? Are they are they dropping back? What kind of coverage are they running? I, I mean, just different things go into it. I mean, uh, both both schools have great coaching staffs. Coach Webb does. We do. You know, I mean, just uh, take what they give you and make in game adjustments if you have to. Well, and I give both of you guys credit because I think that's uh, hard to do to get away from maybe what you. Uh, enjoy doing. I think we all have things we enjoy doing, but to take a look at your personnel and say, hey, this is what uh, will work best, and obviously to take what the defense is giving you too does dictate that. In terms of the history of this game, you guys, this will be the fourth meeting. Franklin leads the series 2-1. Uh, it started out in 2013 and 14 and didn't play again till last year. Uh, Summit coming out on top 28-14. It was a very, very good game last year. Uh, in fact, the score doesn't really indicate how close I think that game was. Uh, Coach Webb, you enjoy having this kind of tough test inside the county for a non-region game. Is that something that you like having? Would you rather have one that's a little bit more of a rest in terms of maybe, a, I'm going to say a gimme win, but uh, that maybe isn't quite this competitive? Or, or is this the kind of game that you that you want for your team? Any any game in Williamson County is a tough game, number one. But number two, it's an awesome game, and it's what the, it's what the kids – uh, it's what it should be about because um, the – you've already talked about the atmosphere and, and, and every one of these – of our schools, um, my, I would take my hat off to every one of their coaching staff. Just like, you know, Coach Coleman already said. Um, my high school coach used to tell me when, when, when I first became a head coach, he said, you better look at your schedule and you better make sure there's four on there for sure, you know, and then if you split the rest of them, you're seven and three. You know, you know, he used to he used to say that all the time, and you're just not able to do that here. Coach, you didn't listen. No, I know. And, but, <laughs> but what I'm what I'm happiest about, man, is you know we're playing with Franklin High Zone kids. 
they're playing with some in high zone kids and, and, and we're, and, uh, and we're going to play football in a great, great atmosphere. So uh, this is going to be a great environment for these kids. It's going to be awesome. Coach Coleman. It's, it's just a great test for us to play a quality six, a in County game. I mean, uh, it's just huge for our kids and, we may very well be up to 6A next year. So, you know, if the numbers pan out like that or whatever, whoever, who knows how it's going to happen. But it can prepare us to uh, to to play with the big boys, to play with the 6A football teams. And and why not a quality team like Franklin High School? Coach Coleman, uh, obviously you guys, and I uh, last year making the state championship game sort of cemented that. But uh, you've really built a nice program there. I, we talked about – when you took over, the program was a new program. It wasn't a program that had really any kind of tradition, hadn't won a lot. I think had won four games uh, before you arrived. Obviously, your, your first year was a tough year. Uh, but since that time, uh, going 0-10, 42-21 uh, since that time. And then you take a look at your team, uh, we're assuming this year you'll be a playoff team. This could potentially be the fifth year in a row. Obviously, it culminated last year in getting to the state championship game. Uh, but you've done a great job there. And to me, as much as anything, it feels like it's a program now at Summit. Would you agree with that? And that's the word that we used when we got here. We wanted to build a program. I mean, uh, you know, that can carry on from year to year. I mean, if you get things in place, uh, expectations are there, you know, uh, you know, different things that kids, we expect of the kids. Uh, it's a program. It's, it's building a program. And our opinion was weight room and, and physicality and things like that. That was our opinion on how we thought we could the program. And, and that's turned out how it has been. And, uh, and I, we have some tough kids and some tough kids mentally too. So, uh, uh I appreciate that, but I think our coach staff has done a great job and proud of the kids, proud of the kids before us. And, 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 uh, the coaches work really, really hard and, and, and it's been fun. And, and I think, you know, now it's just to keep the program going. I mean, you got that part now. Uh, I said earlier in the year, now uh, you're going to start getting everybody's best game. So that's another thing that you have to worry about that these kids aren't really used to. Uh, we used to be the hunter. Now we're the hunted, especially in our region and in 5A. <clears throat> coach Webb, in your ninth year as head coach at Franklin High School, obviously had a stint there before as well as a defensive coordinator. Uh, came back as the head coach in 2012. 2016 made it all the way to the quarterfinals uh, with a team that was uh, 10 and three, you know, and I think something that maybe is, is, is maybe underappreciated or not talked about maybe as much is six of the last eight years uh, you've been in the playoffs, which is very tough to do in the league that you're in. Heck, uh, you know, I, I, I use Centennial as an example all, all the time. Last year, they're three and seven. Uh, they play a Smyrna team that I think finished second in their league and really had their way with them. So uh, uh, I know that's something that you're proud of. Uh, we, you know, when you play Franklin High School, you're going to get a team that's well coached, uh, plays really good defense and going to try to take advantage of, of what they have uh, in terms of uh, what your strengths are as a team. So talk about that six out of eight years being in the playoffs. You've got to be proud of that. Uh, I'm, you know, First thing you gotta do is be proud of the kids because because they work so hard. Uh, I, I've said this since I've been at, at Franklin High, and, I, and I'm sure uh, Coach Coleman may be able to. I know I have no doubt he'll say the exact same thing. One thing that's impressive about these kids in our areas here is you know sometimes they may you may get a little frustrated with uh, a practice thing or, or a habit you're trying to break of some form, but play hard and they play hard for each other and and for the school and then obviously you know for uh everyone around them in their community and that's that's what allows you to be in that now the bottom line is uh there's a lot of other districts and re our regions for football excuse me. a lot of the regions that uh can boast that they got all these people going to the playoffs because that we've got five every year that it's going to a battle for them. And, you know, and then Dixon's going to continue, you know, to work to get better. And, you know, they're in, a, they're in a struggling place right now, but uh, it's, I don't know of any, everybody wants to talk about the Rutherford County region. I don't know 
of any of the anyone that's got you know five every year that it's going to be a battle for the spot. So yeah, I'm proud for our kids, you know, to be able to get there. You know, we what we want to do is move up and get out of that four spot because that's where we you know have been obviously the last two years, and that's what that's what we've been trying to work as a program. You know, when you talked about Rutherford County, and I, I talk about this all the time, Tate Matthews and I discuss this all the time. When you compare Williamson and Rutherford and you talk about the total body of work, I know Oakland's had a great team and uh, been really one of the better teams in Middle Tennessee the past several years. But when you're talking about all teams, all classes, I don't think it's close. I mean, you take a look at Fairview right now, uh, ranked number five in the state, deservedly so. Summit ranked second in the state, made it all the way to the championship game last year. Uh, Ravenwood ranked third in the state in 6A. Brentwood six in the state. I mean, you just go down the line. I don't personally think it's close. Uh, in fact, uh, the game- go ahead, coach. Sorry, I, I didn't mean to. Cut. I forget this Zoom. It'll bug <laughs> sometimes. But the easiest way, real quick, I'll just go go and quote. Um, now, whether or not you liked it or not, personally, when we were all in different regions, I know that Dr. Qualls used to always like to brag about. You know, it was a year that we every one of us made the made the playoffs. You know, it yeah. was it was it was every team that made it. And so that one thing shows you, it kind of validates what you're saying. No doubt about it. Uh, no one's Ville last year, without, which I meant to mention semifinals. And, you know, when you take a look at, I know we're not, it's not what we're talking about, but certainly I like to defend the quality of football and sports in general in this district. Um, uh, you take a look at Independence Blackman last year. Independence at the time, you know, we were thinking they're going to finish third, fourth, they're going to make the playoffs. And Blackman was arguably the second best team over there. And what does Independence do? They roll in there and win 49-7. to seven. So I, you guys know as well as I do, the quality of football in Williamson County is second to none. Let's talk about this real quick. And I know Coach Coleman mentioned it before about classification. And, and listen, I don't no holds bar here. I want you, I'm going to start here with Coach Coleman. What did you think about the new classifications in terms of going to four classes in some of the sports uh, as opposed to three, and then football staying six? If you were commissioner, head of TSSAA, Coach Coleman, what would you have liked to have seen? I like rivals. I like playing the same teams in all sports. Does that make sense? Uh, yeah. uh, I, I don't know. Maybe I guess baseball. There, it's all the same. But it, football was different for us because we we weren't we didn't wouldn't have to play Independence and Franklin. So you know, so we're you know in in five A, uh, and then you go to baseball and basketball. The huge rivals are the in county people. So uh, I like the rivalries. I like playing the same people. Now, if that say, if that says that six in football, four in every other sport, I think that's a good thing. I just I just like playing the same folks, and and I mean. Competitiveness. I like being competitive and, and playing the same type, quality type people. <clears throat> what, what do you think, Coach Webb? Well, obviously, uh, we're not uh, able to look at budgets for reasons they do things um, because that's one really, what, what it's got to be one of the main reasons they stay with six because it, when you talk to coaches around the state, unless they're, unless they're the ones that are on the voting board and they're just lying to us and our face and they want to have it less I would rather have less classes but be able to keep what Coach Coleman's talking about playing the same people so if, if baseball basketball etc were four then football would be four and it'd all be the same regions it, um, you wouldn't want to hear it but because <laughs> uh, I've, I've talked I've had this conversation with with you before I think but you're a little bit different than the last bas- basketball coach I talked to about it that said do away with district tournaments and turn them into regions as well but basketball is such a, a tournament sport. Those things are big, you know, and I get it. But but trying to coordinate the difference between the sport of football compared to the, the other sports where our tournament dictated, I think is a, is a tough part of when you try to make them all the same size. You know, for me, I, I thought, and I, I'm definitely in the minority when it comes to basketball coaches, I wanted less classes. You know, I'm from Kentucky. I like the no-class system in your district tournament meant more. But for Tennessee, I knew we weren't going backwards. What I thought or was hoping we might do is go five in football because I know you guys at the 6A level 
And I credit Coach Coach Coleman for doing this. Of course, he's got a good team, but still people don't always do this. When people aren't in your league and don't have to play you, it seems like there's more excuses about not playing a game when you don't have to. And I know you guys at Franklin and Brentwood has suffered through this some and Ravenwood as well. Uh, I'm sure Coach Coleman runs into this trying to schedule teams that aren't 5A that are in lower classes as well. All of a sudden, nobody can play. And I feel like you guys really deal with that a lot at the 6A level, that folks, you're having to really uh, comb the, through the bushes, so to speak, to try to find a game. And we're running into this too now with, with Metro not playing these games that we have to feel, uh, you know, on short notice, uh, been kind of tough. And, and plus, plus then you want to try to get a home game and the other team doesn't need a home game. And, People want to do a neutral site, but that government neutral site is not very – Cookville is not a neutral site that some people offered us. So, uh, uh, it's even, you know, trying to get games is, is tough. It's tough. It's very tough. Well, let's talk about that some because that's that's one of the questions I was going to ask. Uh, so, you're trying to get a game for Overton. Overton. Coach Webb, you're trying to get a game for McGavick. Where are you guys at on that at this point? Coach Coleman don't have a game in that spot yet. I do not, and and we tried. I mean, I've tried. And now I'm I'm over it. I'm just over it. I'm just going. We're just going to use it as a buy. I mean, uh, we're truthfully beat up a little bit right now physically. So, uh, and then we're going to play a daggone physical football team in Franklin. So I know we're going to be beat up even more next week. So uh, we're going to use it as a buy, and 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 you know, make it an advantage. You take it, take advantage of it. I guess you could say, but. Uh, people might think that we're scared to play us. That's not the case. Uh, I've tried to fill it, but uh, I, we're not going to drive all the way to, to Cookville or, or somewhere like that and on a school bus and, and you know, something like that. So we're going to we're going to use it as a buy. That's how we're going to do next week. <clears throat> how about you, Coach Webb? The hardest thing is uh, it'll piggyback a lot of what Brian, Coach Coleman already said, but Hardest thing is was when I when we started beginning calling ours with McGavick happened to be our homecoming whatever homecoming is going to look like in COVID twenty <laughs> one all right whatever that's going to look like it was our homecoming game so we were trying to keep a home game and then I went into schools but we called and, and and talked and they all wanted home games so the same thing came up I actually had one school that wanted to meet at a neutral place and have both of us have our homecoming there. And so we went back and forth. I, I, I finally, JP2 had an away game with a Kentucky school, and Kentucky's not playing unless you're a bordering county. The way they'll, let you, they'll play across the state line. And so uh, JP2 was willing to come to us. So um, I'll be able to fill that. And, 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 and what I was about to say at the beginning is the, the toughest thing, and I, and I know it's for what – Coach Coleman's going through too is that the kids want to play, you know, and 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 they sat at home for so long, and so you kind of feel bad that it, that you are you're trying like crazy, you're trying like crazy, but there comes a point where it's like, what is the right thing to do for the kids? Get in a bus and drive halfway across the state and to to no atmosphere whatsoever, or try your best. And, and we were just fortunate that they had an away game and it would match up. A lot of challenges in this time that we're living in, for sure. You know, something I thought, and this is probably the basketball coach in me, I, I thought, you know, uh, let's say, for example, you guys had a date later on uh, where it was an opening. I, I thought, why would we see a situation in our county where maybe teams would play each other twice, especially if there's no chance of matching up in the playoffs? What do you think? Is that just a terrible idea, Coach Webb? No, I mean, you know, early on, those conversations were made with all of us. They, we, we were all doing texts back and forth. And, uh, you know, what if we played this, if, if this county doesn't play? And then, then it went back and forth more and more that we were able to see, uh, you know, more we're going to play uh, around us to allow us. But it'd be, it'd be interesting, that's for sure. <laughs> Coach Cohen, so we could do a board <laughs> number two at Summit. That, I've heard that before, but no, 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 no. We escaped out of there with a win. I'm good. No, 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 no. 
We're out. Oh, we're good. We're good. <laughs> All right. Let's talk about again tonight's game a little bit more <clears throat> about last week's game. Summit 35 0 win over Columbia and really dominated from the get go. And I think Coach Coleman, the thing that's so impressive there, I think a lot of people feel like you guys have a shot of being one two uh, in your region. And if you are, certainly you prove that there's a little bit of difference between number one and number two. Destin Wade last week, four rushing touchdowns, 121 yards on 21 carries. Uh, and then your defense really played well. Jacob Turner, Austin Gruders, uh, both with interceptions. So just an all-around great game for your team. And something that, you know, the stat that really stood out to me the most, and this I, I did a double take on this, 321 yards rushing to 22 for Columbia. Just total domination there. Uh, a couple of things there. Uh, I felt like we weren't running the ball effectively in the past couple games, uh, throwing the ball pretty well, pass blocking okay. But I felt like, and we feel like, to be a quality football team and to make a deep run or even advance anywhere in the playoffs, you're going to have to run the football. So that was a big, strong emphasis of the week. And and also on that same note, you got to play good defense. Uh, and the no scrim, I'm going to go back to that again and it's, kind of an excuse I've used for a couple weeks now. The no scrimmages, uh, no game-like situation before our week one game with Independence, you really don't know what you have. You don't know the identity of your your team, your defense, what kids are good at, what they're not good at. So uh, I think, and and hats off to Coach Melton, our defense coordinator. He he does an excellent job, an excellent job. And, and he's just now finding out his personnel. What are these kids good at? What are we good at as a team? What kind of front? What, 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 do you, what do we need to do to be successful? And uh, and I think last week uh, took a step in the right direction of figuring out uh, our team and uh, what we're good at. Now you are right. I think Columbia is a is a high quality football team. Uh, I think they're one of the top teams in the region. I preach to our kids all week uh, that they are a good football team. Don't take them for granted. And uh, very proud of our guys. Uh, came out from play one and 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 played hard for for the four quarters and. Uh, you know, came out with a win and was very proud of the guys. Frank, when you guys hosted uh, Ravenwood, Coach Webb, down 28 nothing, but he <laughs> you weren't at that game because I was there. Uh, you cut it to 28-14, and then, not to bring up a bad memory, that penalty, third and 17, you got Ravenwood in their own territory, you get the pass interference, and then, of course, they go on to uh, convert on the fourth and two, they go on to score, and then – really put it out of reach but uh, I don't think people maybe appreciate how you had clawed your way back into that game and what a great performance by Carson repass he he had a like a, a highlight film for a year in some of the catches he made in that game uh, he, Carson had a great game he really did uh, um, I believe if uh, he'd have to learn come home and eat with me a little bit <laughs> if he put some weight on I think he's I think he's an H or a Y at the next level, I really do, um, and, and he has that potential. Uh, we don't get fined in WCS for talking bad about officials, do we? You know, uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> we can always delete it. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I, you know, I said tongue in cheek because you're correct. Uh, does, does the outcome of the game, uh, who won and who lost, change? No, but that was a huge call. It was, like you said, it was third and seventeen. You know we're going to be getting the football back. We had we had we had some momentum going. We 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 really I was proud of our kids. We uh, made a couple of adjustments. You know with the way we were trying to play their RPOs because we weren't playing them at all in the first half. That's for sure. And we were able to slow it down because that's the thing with Ravenwood. They they want to jump on you, get on you quick, and and, and then you got to get how are you going to react to what the storm that has hit you. Um, and we fought back, man. We fought back hard. And it was a shame, but that's part of the game. And 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 then obviously, you know, once they got it to, you know, move on down to score, it was it was pretty much over. But um, really proud of, of uh, a lot of kids that uh, stepped up and you know and kept playing well. We just we've got to be able to get a better start. Um, I'm sadly, I, I, I hate to say this, I thought I, I told Coach Crawford, I was talking to him on the phone, I thought I would never say this about a Franklin High team that we got beat in the kicking game, um, you know, at Ravenwood, I mean, excuse me, at uh, Riverdale. And 
I don't know. I think some of that also is when you do have new – I'm going to piggyback off what Coach Coleman said. Without those scrimmages and you weren't able to see certain things that you can do in, and what you can't do in the kicking game, it, it's just as important as the X's and O's of the offense and defense. Well said. All right, gentlemen, we're short on time. This has gone by really quick. I know you guys are wanting to move on and get ready for the game tonight, but I've really enjoyed uh, talking to you guys. Just real quickly, Coach Coleman, if I had to say, hey, what's it going to take tonight? Give me one key. I know there's many keys as a coach. So what's one thing that you're really concerned about uh, that you need to do tonight to be effective against Franklin? Match their physicality. Uh, big, big offensive line, big defensive line, just physical – Physical guys, uh, we're going to have to match that in order to stay in the game for sure. And Coach Webb, how about for the Admirals? I've had to practice that a couple of times, by the way. Admirals. Um, I think right off the bat is not let someone else have a huge game. Um, you know, Wade's a great player. He's a, he really is, and, and, and he's going to get his stuff. I mean, he's going to get – don't let someone else um, have a monster Superman-type game alongside him or it can get away quickly. Gentlemen, I appreciate you being here. Good luck in tonight's game. We're looking forward to it. Again, the WCTV game of the week, Franklin at Summit High School. Thank you. We'll see you next week for the Coach's Preview Show.